Hello, I'm Piers Corbyn from weatheraction.com, long range weather and climate forecasters. And today is the 28th of January, 2011. And I'm gonna give you a short report on what's happened for December and January, which is the Northern Hemisphere winter so far. Now, we said at the outset in November that we would see this winter around the world, which includes the Southern Hemisphere summer, of course, a uh, continual jet stream blocking uh, situations, which are generated by a combination of low solar activity plus lunar influences. Um, and in particular, we said this type of uh, jet stream blocking would lead to uh, north winds, uh, often in Britain uh, and Europe, and would also lead to a uh, uh, track of lows uh, up the uh, uh, east coast of America, giving extreme blizzards in uh, New England area. And that original forecast for this jet stream blocking was made last June and it's going to continue throughout this year. We said uh, in particular for Britain and Europe the essence of winter sponsors forecast said that December to February inclusive in Britain and Europe will be exceptionally cold and snowy like hell frozen over at times with much of England, Germany, Benelux and northern France suffering one of its coldest winters for a hundred years. And it is expected, we said, that two of the three months, December, January and February, are likely to be in the three coldest for a hundred years, uh, certainly in England. Now, and then for December, we specifically said it would be extremely cold and exceptionally snowy and probably the coldest December for 100 years, which, as you know, it was. And we put out that forecast, which was confirmed, contrary to all other forecasters, uh, medium range, long range of all varieties. No one else believed it, but it happened. And of course, this means in terms of our weather bet measurement of success, which we uh, uh, announced we would do uh, along with others, uh, it means that if we placed a pound on the bet that it would be the coldest for 100 years, we would be 99 pounds ahead. And the Met Office, who if they placed a pound on their mild winter forecast or mild December forecast, would be, well, they would have lost a pound. Uh, or if they have their two forecasts, one for mild, one for cold, then they'd lose a pound and win a pound, so they'd be nowhere. Um, we'll talk about what happened in January uh, uh, shortly, but continuing on December, the results for Britain were excellent. And the results as well in the USA, where we made a specific forecast for severe blizzards, very severe blizzards, um, uh, in New England, Northeast USA to happen just after Christmas. Those happened with a vengeance. Uh, so we're extremely pleased with the December forecast and uh, we had coverage after that on Sky News. Um, Boris Johnson, the Mayor of London, wrote about us in the Daily Telegraph. Uh, we were reported on American uh, television, both ABC TV and uh, Fox News. And we were, have also recently been reported on Italian main television channel one. However, the BBC has ignored us absolutely, completely. And I think one should ask the question, why? January this year has been a very interesting month. Our general prognosis for continuing jet stream blocking and therefore extreme weather events around the world, such as super cold or floods or blizzards, uh, was carrying on. And uh, specifically, looking around the world, starting off with the USA, we issued for the first time 
a specific map forecast which was for the 12th to 31st of January where we concentrated only on extreme events and even then mainly in the eastern part of the USA. So this was, wasn't a forecast of everything, just a forecast of certain extreme events. And we very specifically predicted there would be a series of low pressures which would tend to start from the Gulf of Mexico and track up the East Coast and deepen often when they're uh, in New England and bring huge amounts of snow which would be far in excess of what traditional forecasters would be saying from even a day ahead and a lot of it would include thunder snow very severe travel disruption and we had um, four very specific periods of this extreme stuff and a number of less extreme ones but four very specific extreme snow and they all worked and the, the uh, snow levels were much higher than standard meteorology has said and many of them included thunder snow so we're very pleased with the American forecast for other parts of the world there were uh, other extreme events due to jet stream or also intertropical convergence zone blocking whereby there were very big floods in Brazil uh, there was major flooding in uh, 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 Sri Lanka um, there was absolutely huge snow uh, situation uh, and very 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 cold situation in, in uh, parts of China and we had the tremendous floods in Australia, which uh, <coughs> hit the news big time. Now, these are caused by, we pointed out, a combination of blocking uh, situations and, and uh, tro tropical cyclone, in fact, in the intertropical convergence zone, and also um, blocking type events on the southern jet stream which in f affects both different parts of Australia. Now, we pointed out that the, uh, uh, there's a lunar effect involved here, which is very significant. Namely, you can get these big floods in Australia only when the El Nino is weak, i.e. you have La Nina, intense La Nina instead, uh, and you have a certain phase of the lunar eclipse cycle and um, this year we had a, a lunar eclipse uh, on the uh, well the 20th of the solstice the 21st of December and we had a solar eclipse on the 4th of January <clears throat> and if you look back in the records you can see that every 19 years if there's also a southern oscillation index um, been in the right, right phase, you get these floods. So they are solar, lunar driven and also predictable. It means that if the Southern Oscillation Index is doing what uh, uh, is, is going to enhance this as well, these floods will continue uh, next, uh, next uh, December, January uh, or so. And it also means that after this phase, there'll be 19 years of relatively less, less floods. Now, of course, this is very important because it means they are essentially predictable. However, the global warming warmers in Australia do not want to know. Instead, they jump up and down and say it's all to do with global warming. And uh, notably, some of these floods were much worse than they otherwise would have been, but for the fact that they had stopped some uh, programs to build dams because they believed there were going to be continuing droughts. Now, of course, they say in the Floods means droughts or war means cold or some complete nonsense. Um, which is all very well if it was just fun, but of course it's not because people die as a consequence of their failed science. The point about Australia though, of course, is these things are predictable. We did make a statement that there will be some sort of uh, reappearance of some more floods, southwest Queensland, uh, 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 northern New South Wales, or something like that, um, later on in January, which certainly happened to an extent. 
but these are just trial forecasts for Australia, and we're looking forward to being able to do proper flood forecasts a long time ahead for uh, Australia. <coughs> now, what about January for Europe then? Well, our forecast is very interesting. Although everything worked in America, for example, everything was working in Britain for the first week or two, and January the 6th to 10th was a north-south split as we predicted. Uh, in detail, it was an extremely good forecast uh, with mild in the south and the west and uh, much colder in Scotland and the northeast. Um, we thought that that would then be defeated by cold air and cold air would return, but it wasn't. And we had a continuation of mild or certainly not cold weather for longer than we expected. Now, at the end of January, we have a return to the cold, <coughs> as we expected, but it's a bit late. So certainly January is not going to be uh, record-breaking or anything. Um, but February may well be, and we'll talk about that, that later. Now, the reasons for this forecast working in America but not in Britain are very interesting. What it appears is that the... Uh, uh, jet stream that we, we had in mind was continued as we expected in, in America but uh, the high pressure that was we expected to stay in the Atlantic in fact got knocked aside and mild air just swooshed across um, through Britain um, and this we now understand is due to essentially the stratospheric winds at the equator, I know this is complicated, but being in the west. And when that happens during January is in high, level, uh, high levels of geomagnetic activity, you get a lot more mobility and the Siberian high, for example, disappears. Now, this only happens some of the time, but it's something we hadn't paid enough attention to about January's with stratospheric winds in the west, which means that you can have what looks like mixed weather states around the world. So we then developed solar lunar action technique number six, which should take account of these. And we hope therefore this type of mistake, which it was a mistake, will be eliminated in the future. Thank you.